Hey, today we're going to uh, put a 10 megahertz external reference into this Sencor FC45. Uh, this one's good from uh, 30 hertz to 230 megahertz. Uh, the 51 model is good up to a gig. So. This is the one we're going to be concentrating on today, and I'll show you some different points. Right there goes drooping down. I'll show you some uh, things that I've uh, done inside, some uh, upgrades, and I'll show you how to do the mod. Okay, this is the inside of the Sencor FC45 frequency counter. And as you can see, I've already got the uh, display out and stuff, so let me show you some of that. It's pretty easy. Uh, Here's the display board itself. And here's the bezel. The bezel goes into the, into the front of the case and you'll see the little tabs where the screws go in. The board sits on top of that with some little brass spacers and that screws in from the inside. Uh, and all the connectors are different so don't worry about it. Just pull it right out of there. Now I wanted to go over some of the uh, stuff here in the back because the schematic is a little crazy. We got the schematic over here and trying to decipher where they're going uh, is a little bit difficult. So let me find the screw guy over here. This section right here is uh, one amp. Uh, rectifying diodes that's 15 and then over here there's a zener this is the one large cap that I'm going to show you and this is the other large cap that I uh, filter the ripple and these are the 3 amp which gives your uh, I believe it's 9 volts so let me go over that real quick here's the 3 amp ones Here's the one amp ones, and here's the zener. Okay, but if you'll notice you have your rectifying diodes here, and then way over here is your filter caps, and then it comes back again. This board, if you can see some of these traces in here, look like a race car track, where they're just insanely going everywhere. Now down here, let me show you real quick. Right here and right here, you'll see a just a two diode rectifying circuit and that goes up to your heater which is here now they're snuck in get it focused they are right here and right here now on mine those two are toast so the heater wasn't working at all so it's those and then the rest of the heater circuits over here in the back right corner I had to replace this 4148 here. This is your heater control and the calibration. They'll talk about, in the calibration, they'll talk about this resistor here going to ground. They'll talk about checking the voltages over here on this resistor here, on the leg here on this transistor, and then setting this control. That's your heater control setup. So I want to go over that real quick. So here's uh, the two caps uh, for filtering the ripple. They've been replaced. This cap's been replaced. And this one down here in the corner has been replaced. So let's look at the heater now. Normally when you open this up, there's a styrofoam box around it, which is the oven. Or creates the oven atmosphere. And all it is is two ceramic resistors if you look in here you'll see two diodes they're the sensors and then obviously your crystal in the center so as the heater circuit heat sees up these shut it on and off so that's what's in there uh, I'm going to be modifying this to use an external 10 megahertz reference I've already got my BNC connector and my switch on the back and the trace is right here. 
right here. It looks like it's already been done, even though there's no connector on the back of this case. It really looks like there's a cut mark here, and somebody's cut into that at one point. So that's where it'll go, and I'll cover that too. Okay, I've got the mod done. Let's see if I can get some light in here. It's tough now, I got everything back together. Right down there by that scope probe. You'll see where I cut the trace and brought a white wire and a gray wire out. And I brought those back here to the switch. Okay, and I've also brought these other two wires out, the green one and the blue one. And what I've done is over here on the back of R18, when I shut off the internal crystal, it grounds that resistor and, and shuts off the oven heating circuit. Because there's no reason for the, the heater to be running if you're not using it, so... I've done that. Right now you can see it's, it's got no internal crystal going. And I have two uh, probes uh, hooked up here to the scope. The red one's going to be the frequency and the yellow one. I don't know if you can even tell it's yellow. It's blurry. Will be the oven circuit. I wanted to show you that working. So let's click the switch. There we go. We can see our 10 megahertz. And you can see the oven uh, heating up. If we wait a minute. We've got this really cranked here, so I'm going to turn it down here. see how much noise is on it here so there's no uh, cap on there to, to filter out the ripple it's really nasty looking turn this back up again so it's still heating up at this point see the voltage is down there on the bottom yellow is the heater Okay, there we go. Oven shut down. Still got 1.4 volts on it, but you've seen it's inactive at this point. And this is with the uh, switch put into the external reference mode. You can see both the uh, heater and the frequency are shut off. Turn it back on. Okay, I wanted to go over real quick. This is on uh, page 22 of the manual, and this was the uh, saying the voltage for the uh, oven circuit. And I kind of briefly went over it, but I figured I'd point out the proper stuff here, make it easier on somebody else. This is what you ground, which I've I've shown in my mod here. You ground this, and over here, this resistor. 17 on the far side of this side they want you to measure uh, the voltage from case to here okay once you have that number that voltage they want you to minus 100 millivolts of it so 0.1 volts then they want you to hook the meter to the wiper it should be the center leg of the uh, pot here and adjust that for 0.1 volts below what you got on this resistor over here 
and that's the uh, heater control setting. I just wanted to make a suggestion when you're putting the face back on. Here you'll see two of the brass inserts, and I've got two sitting on the posts that come through for the front bezel. And my suggestion is when you put these screws back in, put some kind of uh, silicone on it or some kind of lube on it because you're screwing into those little plastic uh, things. And I've had problems with that on my other one where when I took it apart, they were already broken. And uh, I repaired, you know, I re glued them on there and put them back together. I use, uh, I'm going to use some of this because I do reloading to spray on evaporating uh, lubricant or you could use something like this just something on there so they're not creaking when they're going in there and uh, don't moose them in there 